I'm Jess Burns with headlines for FSRN. The Israeli Navy boarded two Gaza Strip-bound aid boats in international waters earlier today. It was the second time in the past year that activists attempted to break Israel's maritime blockade of the Palestinian territory. FSRN's Jillian kessler Damore has the story from Israel. The Israeli Navy took control of a Canadian and an Irish boat some 50 kilometers from the coast of Gaza. 27 passengers were on board. The boat set off from Turkey on Wednesday with $30,000 worth of medicine and other supplies. Dubbed Freedom Waves, the most recent aid convoy was part of the Gaza Freedom Flotilla movement, which aims to challenge the Israeli blockade of the Gaza Strip. Ben Lorber is a spokesperson with the group. Both of the boats have been boarded by the IDF. The Irish boat, the Shirsha, the activists have been removed from the boat, and they're currently in IDF custody, and they're being steered uh, on an IDF boat to the port of Ashdod, and then they're going to get to Ashdod, and they're going to spend the night in an Israeli prison. The Israeli military reported that no injuries were sustained during the boarding of the boats. Earlier this week, Israel offered to allow the flotilla to dock in Egypt and offload their cargo there for transfer to Gaza. In May 2010, nine Turkish activists were killed when the Israeli Navy boarded a previous Gaza Freedom Flotilla. Jillian kessler Demore, FSRN, Jerusalem. Leaders of the world's biggest economies are struggling to calm the European debt crisis at a meeting of the Group of 20 in Cannes. But whether the rescue package hammered out in Brussels last week will go forward largely hinges on a dramatic political showdown in Greece. FSRN's Liam Moriarty reports. Thousands of protesters waving red and white flags and chanting anti-austerity slogans gathered outside the Greek parliament in Athens. They listened to speakers waiting to hear the results of a confidence vote on Prime Minister Georges Papandreou and his socialist government. Papandreou's call earlier this week for a public referendum on Greece remaining in the Eurozone triggered a crisis in the Greek government, with even some members of his own party calling on him to resign. He soon reversed himself, saying that a pledge of opposition party support for the rescue package made a referendum unnecessary. If the Greek government falls, there are calls to form a national unity government with the opposition New Democracy Party. Another option would be to install a non-political caretaker government to manage things until new elections could be held. The chaos in Greece's government is cranking up the pressure on already jittery Eurozone officials trying to prevent an outright Greek default. An 8 billion euro chunk of aid scheduled to be sent next week is being held off until the dust settles in Athens. If that payment is not made, Greek officials say, 700,000 public workers and more than 2 million pensioners won't get paid at the end of the month. Liam Moriarty, FSRN, Normandy, France. The CIA is changing the rules governing unmanned drone airstrikes. The Wall Street Journal quotes unnamed U.S. officials as saying the bar has been raised. Under the changes, the State Department will have a greater hand in deciding on targets. Some advance notice of strikes will be given to the Pakistani government, and drone attacks will stop when Pakistani officials are in the U.S. Changes have been made in drone policies in other countries as well. Former New Jersey Governor and Senator John Corzine today resigned from his post as head of troubled investment firm MF Global. The firm filed for bankruptcy on Monday, and soon after, the SEC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, and the FBI all launched investigations, looking for more than $600 million in missing money. The company reportedly invested heavily in European debt and lost. Bloomberg reports MF Global's bankruptcy is the eighth largest in U.S. history. As occupations continue to hold space in city parks around the country, activists are calling on their fellow 99 percenters to pull their money out of commercial banks on Bank Transfer Day, scheduled for tomorrow. FSRN's Sue Hildebrand reports from California. In the small town of Chico in the Sacramento Valley, both occupiers and credit unions are riding the wave of national anger towards corporate financial institutions. On the eve of the National Bank Transfer Day, Chico activist Robert Troush is urging people to rethink where they keep their money. We're calling on people to go to the larger banks and to take their money out and put them into local credit unions because a local credit union is owned by the people. Even before this call to action, credit unions have seen a surge in activity. The Credit Union National Association reports 650,000 new members in October alone. 
The surge coincides with the Occupy protests, as well as Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo announcing new debit card fees, fees they have since abandoned. Those new transfers are estimated at $4.5 billion. Joe Kelly is president and CEO of Star Community Credit Union in Chico. The movement, you know, has been gaining momentum for the past month. That debit card fee was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Hoping to capitalize on the day, Kelly says he plans to open the doors on Saturday, a rare event. He believes the movement will continue long past November 5th. Sue Hildebrand, Free Speech Radio News, Chico. And that's headlines for FSRN. From Eugene, Oregon, I'm Jess Burns.